Hi friends, Suzanne here. Welcome to another Paper Pumpkin Alternative video. This is for the month of May 2021 and the Paper Pumpkin is called Batter Up. We got three pieces of double bubble gum. Look how hard this is. <laughs> Stick it if you stick it in your mouth and just let, let it soften before you chew it. So this is an advertisement for next month's paper pumpkin kit. You can still uh, get it. You sign up right now and you will get it in your mailbox. It is going to have these sort of inky colors and we're going to get two Stampin' Spots and it's going to be a fantastic month next month. So this is the stamp set in the Batter Up Paper Pumpkin. Uh, there's a lot of, it's for, it's masculine for sure. Baseball themed, yes. You get a Knight of Navy ink spot. And then here are all the components that you are going to get. This is what the, what it, they're supposed to look like. And if you will notice, just take a notice as our instructions here are in color, first time ever. It is a three page fold. So it's, uh, you, and you still have the ruler on, on the right hand side, which I always find awesome. It's a great, great tool. Here are all the components. And here are the alternatives that the artists have created, which is a good thing because I struggled with this paper pumpkin kit. I struggled. Uh, I'm not really fond of red uh, as a big bold color and uh, no disrespect, but I'm not a big baseball fan. So here is uh, the hits <laughs> that splash page basically said that, uh, you know, this was the first card and we're not making a card. We're going to make a little box. So uh, I am cutting a inch off of the white side, put that strip aside, I'm lining the red side up to three and a half. I am scoring right there at three and I think it's three and a half. And then it's just an inch from the crease basically. And then uh, I'm scoring one inch on all four sides. It's pretty easy to uh, figure this. I, I'm doing it slowly so you can, uh, people who are new to box making, they think it's really difficult and it's actually really not. The, there is a scoring blade in your trimmer. Everyone usually has one. If you don't have one, just put the bone folder in the slot and uh, score from there. It's very easy. Then you're going to take your bone folder and you're going to burnish all the score lines. I've sped this up because it's pretty self-explanatory. Then what we're going to do is cut up on the score line and then we are wedging out. So we're creating little wedges and we only wedge out on the uh, smaller bits, like the little squares here. You don't want to wedge out on the rectangles. And it's, you just cut up to the first score line there and you wedge out. Then the, we're going to make sort of like a pizza box, I guess you can say. So um, f four of the tabs are going to adhere to the box base and two of the tabs are going to adhere to the top of the box. So obviously the top of the box is going to be this red sunburst. Do you know, it kind of reminds me of the Karate Kid. Who's with me on that? <laughs> Do you remember Ralph Macchio? I don't know how to say his last name. And uh, he would wear this uh, band, uh, the headband of the rising star. Or was it, wasn't it called the rising star? I can't even remember. It's uh, Asian, I believe. And uh, yeah, so that's, it just gives me flashbacks of the Karate Kid. Man, I'm old. I love that movie. <laughs> all right. So you can see what I'm doing. I adhered all of the uh, bits together and voila, here's a box. You can do it too. <laughs> Just go slow. Um, I had a hard time decorating the box, however, because I just, I wanted to create something that I could use and I don't have a lot of guys in my life. 
uh, and uh, my one of my best friends is a guy, and he is not he does not like baseball. He's a mathematics professor, so he's very cerebral. <laughs> you want to talk to him about you know mathy things. <laughs> he's the guy I go to for um, help when I require some information about stocks and bonds. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so I tied a bow and I stuck a bow on there and I figured that was good enough. I struggled so hard with this kit. think I didn't do too badly, but I, I think I have four solid alternatives here, but the fifth one was a complete hack. So, you know, I'm probably going to get lots of thumbs down for it, but that's okay. <laughs> All right, so this is the, um, son, I'm going to call this the Karate Kid card. <laughs> um, I cut off the white part and then I lined the, um, the line between, so I'm trying to cut out the starburst. I'm only going to the middle of the starburst and I'm cutting on the border of the red and white. So what I wanted to do was create wedges and my initial, um, idea was to do sort of like that scrap scrappy technique uh, that Bruno uh, Bertucci came out with and it kind of worked I think it would have worked better had I had a more selection of colors uh, I suppose I could have wedged up one of those uh, stripey cards that's in the kit but I didn't think of that until just now so <laughs> What I ended up doing is this is a, let me, it's a mini slimline card. So it's six and a half inches high. It's six and a quarter inches long, and you're going to score it at three and a quarter. So that means that um, I will have a mat eventually that is uh, six and a quarter by three. No, sorry, pardon me, six by three. That's right. Okay, so yeah, you can see what I'm doing. Uh, I stamped and then I have added with wet glue. So my scissors are gonna be sticky and I'm going to be sticky for the rest of the video making process. <laughs> What I'm working on is a silicone mat. And in case you don't know what that is, it uh, Stephen Up does sell them. It's a nice little mat, especially if you're using this glue, because this glue, which is um, Tombow Mono Adhesive, it is sticky. So when it dries, if you leave a little bit on somewhere and it dries, it becomes temporary. Like um, it, it's an adhesive, but it's not a strong adhesive. Um, when you let it dry. I don't know if I'm making sense here. It's late. <laughs> so if you put it on a piece of paper and you put the piece of paper down onto something straight away, then it's an excellent bond. But as you can see, sometimes um, I have little bits of glue on my desk. And when the green, we call it the green glue because it's got a green lid, when this glue actually dries and it's say, you know, somewhere that's not on your card, it becomes just tacky. It will never dry hard. And sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's a great quality in a glue. And sometimes it's not <laughs> because it, uh, they call it a repositional bull glue at that point. And let me tell you, you get pretty sticky sometimes. Like I feel like I'm covered completely in glue after I use this. Not my favorite glue. I personally like dry adhesive for sure, but it's too hard to do these little bits. Look at how sticky my scissors are. So in order for me to clean that, I would just take an alcohol wipe and just wipe that down. All right. So this is my uh, six and yeah, my six by three inch uh, mat. And then I put my card front on my mat and then I adhered it to a real red card base. So it's a kind of a fun card. It's different for sure. It's red. I use Wink of Stella to sparkle up the word best. And it just says, you're the best. <laughs> uh, 
uh, and no baseball reference whatsoever. And I even went in with the shimmery crystal effects and uh, we Stampin' Up! sells this glue. It's fantastic. And since I went on a little rant about the green glue, this glue actually dries hard. So you can use it if you want to make your own embellishments. You And it's really affordable. You can use it, say, if you wanted to make a window look like a window, right? You want it to look like glass or Christmas ornaments. That's another reason why you could use this glue. This glue has a little bit of sparkle in it. So we all know how I like Wink of Stella. So of course, it goes hand in hand with Wink of Stella. Here's a little tip. If you do use this and you want to just to go over the, over the letters and it's leached out somewhere, just take a little piece of cardstock and clean it up. All right, that's card number two. All right, here's that green glue again. I just have a little dish. Quinn and Molly didn't mind me borrowing their treat dish. I squirted a little bit of glue in it and I'm also squirted a little bit of water. I want to thin this glue out so it's I can use a paintbrush. So this is a basic white card base and I have the tissue from the box. I'm just putting that aside there. And then I'm just very lightly I'm going to cover the whole bit of paper. So that's the reason why I wanted the glue to be thinner because I don't want the paper to recognize it's wet yet. I'm going to put the tissue straight down and sort of ruffle it up, get some creases and stuff in there. And now I'm going in with the paintbrush and I'm doing it a second time. And then I'm going to fold the paper over on itself. So it has two layers of tissue. So I get a really nice blue on my white card base. So I'm trimming off the excess. And these are long scissors. And I haven't used the alcohol wipe yet, so they're sticky from my last card. But that's okay. And the, I didn't want a perfect coverage. The whole point was to have it look ripped and tattered. Then this is one of the stripey card bases and I am just ripping and creating sort of a white ripped edge. And I'm getting out my ruler here so I can measure this card piece because eventually somebody asks. So this is four and seven eighths tall and it's kind of ripped at three, between three and a half and three and a quarter. All right, so I'm fussy cutting the word star and the letter A out of this sentiment that came in the kit. So I could have easily stamped this as well, but since there was something in the um the kit that was already stamped i it just less work right so i i fussy cut the word star out and i want this sentiment to say you're a star i am truly thinking of alternatives <laughs> because again i just don't have a, a use for baseball themed cards and i love the idea that people were sort of um you know messing around with this card kit and uh, really utilize like you could tell that they're feverent uh, fans of uh, baseball and as a Canadian we have a tendency to I mean most of us anyway like hockey and I'm even a weirdo in that where I'm kind of don't even really fond of hockey I, I like MMA am I weird <laughs> All right, um, I have a blending brush here and I'm just tapping the edges and I'm blending on balmy blue for this. And this is a baseball. This was the circle. Uh, there was a, uh, and it was a baseball. So this is a marker 
that I put the nib in the in the lid and sort of flick it and you get sort of a splattery spray it's very cool it doesn't hurt the marker at all and it seems to um, give some interest all right so now I'm going to put part of the the card together so here is uh, it's bowing a little because it was a little wet but it, I can assure you that it dried flat I put the stripey piece on then I'm going to adhere the um, star word and the capital A on my circle, which was a backwards baseball. <laughs> and then there is a sentiment in the kit, and this is it. It says, uh, you're, the, you're the best. So I used one of the banners that was in the kit. It's kind of this gray marbly, uh, and I think it's supposed to be a banner of some sort. So I used it for paper and um, the your I cut out and I put dimensional adhesive on the back of it. And now I've created my own sentiment. So I didn't cut up the stamps this time, but I did cut up the words of the stamp. All right, so here is that white twine again. And this time I'm going to color it with a blends marker. If you don't have a blends marker, if you wanted to color white string a different color, you could use a Sharpie pen because they kind of work the same. They're permanent markers and they do stain other materials. Uh, the only way that I have found to remove uh, alcohol ink is with alcohol itself um, but yeah I and this string was not fully covered I just I wanted a little bit of interest so I haven't done a messy nest in a really long time and it was fantastic to do it with sort of like a wet uh, linen thread here <laughs> so I bunched it up I also put a lot of dimensionals on the back of my circle and I adhered the string to the card using the circle. So no extra adhesive needed. Then I took that blends marker and I colored several of the yellow uh, embellishments that, that came in the kit. Sharpie markers would do the same, but blends markers are alcohol markers and they do color everything. They only take a minute to dry and they I used the yellow because I figured okay underlying yellow with a blue is kind of a greeny color so that would go so but funnily enough it, it they look blue to me now not bluey green so all right so this is card number four and I have a whole bunch of, I have the envelope here and I have, and I just cut the envelope right off the, I have the stripey card front and then I had, uh, that marbled banner piece. So these I'm cutting the, uh, pieces down to one and three quarters by one and a half. So I have two pieces of dark stripes and two pieces of light stripes. And they're all going the same direction. I did not want to be confusing when uh, on the card, I didn't want it to be too overly busy to have opposing stripes. That's what went on in my head anyway. Like, no, they all have to go to the, the same. They don't have to um, be different. And then I have a piece of, uh, basic white that is five and a quarter by four. And it is, this is a balmy blue mat. And that is five and three eighths by four and an eighth. So slightly bigger. I love these really tight, frames. I think they add a lot of interest and they contain really well without taking away from the actual card design. So I put dimensional adhesive on the back of the card 
squares. <laughs> then I took my handy dandy ruler. I've had this since um, high school. And I measured the middle of this card. And then I wanted four quadrants. I want them tightly together so they don't have a big border. Um, I would say that the border between each of them is about, hang on, I'll measure. Um, half a centimeter. Oh, sorry. What is that in inches? When I'm small, I accurately, it's about a quarter of an inch, just shy of a quarter of an inch. All right, so I've stamped with Pacific Point because that is what the, uh, that looks best in my eye. I have cut out the word best. I will pop that up with dimensionals and I will also stamp the word friend. And I will pop that whole sentiment piece on dimensionals and I will put that in the center of the card. And did I put Wink of Stella on this one? I did. I even put Wink of Stella on the word best. And I think, again, this is a very, it's an, it's an alternative to baseball. A true alternative. It's not just moving the components around in a different way. It is really creating an alternative in case you got the kit and you did not you know like baseball you needed something different All right, you guys, this is the alternative card number five. It's a shameless plug to ask folks to sign up with me for Paper Pumpkin. <laughs> I have uh, Knight of Navy. So this is the total hack, you guys. So I wouldn't even count this as an alternative because it's not really. This is the baseball. I flipped it over. I'm hitting it with a little bit of uh, Knight of Navy ink because that's what came in the kit. I took a little bit of my, like we have these water pens now, so they're like paintbrushes. I scooshed a little water on my non-porous surface here and I flicked some spatter on my circle. Um, I just hit it against the acrylic block and there was a tiny flex of color, same like the marker trick. Then I took this announcement of the expressions in color <laughs> that was in the kit. I'm seriously, I had trouble. I had trouble, you guys. Um, and I cut off the strips uh, of paint of um, this alcohol ink. But this expressions in ink uh, designer series paper that you can get in the annual catalog, catalog is so beautiful. And it is such a neat... Um, I don't know. It's such a neat design. So I couldn't get enough of it. And since you have that advert in your paper pumpkin, why not use it? I'm, I'm not working out of the box, you guys. But like I said, this is not baseball themed at all. Uh, <laughs> anyway, it's a hack. I know it. It's not even an alternative. So please don't give me thumbs down. Um, I inked up the word friend and I put it in the lower quadrant of the circle. I uh, put dimensional adhesive on that circle. I put the circle in the bottom third of my card. I hope you guys sign up for the uh, next month's paper pumpkin kit because I think it'll be really awesome. So this one wasn't so. I colored with my, uh, like I think it was the uh, Blackberry Bliss to try to match the colors in the, in those alcohol ink strips. I made a tiny white bow and I stuck it down with a glue dot. I use regular glue dots and I save my uh, flat glue dots for another day. I, maybe I'm hoarding them. I don't know. <laughs> I'll give them to my friend Terry. She likes them. 
Um, yeah, so, and that's, that's it, you guys. That is it. A, a big struggle to uh, get this on time. I'm late as usual. And um, it was really tough getting even four um, alternatives together. I got three good ones and a box. <laughs> so um, I know a lot of peace people look to me for inspiration and I tell you it was it was difficult this month so next month I'm sure it'll be fine anyway thank you so much for watching uh, the link in the description will take you to uh, how you can sign up for paper pumpkin with me I would really appreciate if you did and that's it thanks for watching bye for now <laughs>